Hey, what's happening guys? Mike Moo here. This video is about why you might want to consider still getting a dedicated GPS device for your navigation needs in the car. Uh, in today's day and age, we have smartphones. A lot of us carry smartphones that have good enough navigation on there, which is free, right? Why is this free? Well, um, the companies like to collect data on you. Uh, you're using a GPS and you're basically reporting back everywhere that you're going. It's an opportunity for them to sell advertising to you and give you benefits uh, that you would not easily get otherwise with a portable navigation device. So if your privacy is one of those major concerns, um, that's one excellent, excellent reason why you will want to get a dedicated GPS device. Okay, but you still got to be careful about these things because, you know, when you update it uh, and when you set certain settings, you can save information about that. This basically uh, keeps logs on where you go just by default. So you'll want to go into settings to see how you race it. So one thing is privacy, right? But you might be saying, well, Mike, uh, I don't really care about privacy. I use Gmail anyway. I'm happy to give it up. Um, I trust Google. I don't know if you should. Do you trust Facebook? Uh, especially with all the things that's happening, right? So privacy is is one of those big concerns. Second major thing about this. Oh, before I continue with this, I want to say that even though this video is about why you might want to consider getting a dedicated GPS for your navigation and driving, etc., is that I use Waze. I love Waze. Here in LA, we have crazy amounts of traffic. Waze gives me the most accurate the most accurate up-to-date traffic information out of everything okay and by the way google owns ways right they bought ways they google maps gets that traffic data that us as ways users share out with everybody and they you know they pull that information into google maps at a somewhat delayed rate they have a different algorithm for google maps versus ways it's more instantaneous so if you trust the ways drivers around you then you get immediate notification. Okay, so that's that is absolutely fantastic. So I am 100% a Waze user. I'm definitely I hit the royalty mark for those of you guys that know in terms of the points. I'm I'm I've been at the top because I've been using Waze for years up and down California, and also Las Vegas areas. Okay, so um, so privacy, right? If you are really concerned about privacy, that's one thing. Another thing is that you got to remember that this GPS device is a dedicated unit designed to help you with primarily road navigation okay your phone on the other hand is a smart computer it does a lot of things fairly well but first and foremost remember that this is a lot of times is a social media device it's a pocket computer you're going to receive notifications on here you can get phone calls if anything these are the number one distracting things that you can ever have in your car if you if you are if you have bad habits or if you're looking at your notifications, right? If you just put this away, uh, put it in airplane mode or whatever it is that you want, keep it complete out of sight, out of mind, and just use one of these for your driving, um, you're just going to be a lot safer, just hands down a lot safer, right? Do you really need to see and read that text message? Do you really need to know about about uh, that, that tweet or some other notice? No, you don't. Finish up your driving. Right? Lives are, are at hand. So another thing, too, is that if you are a professional driver, and I mean like if, if you're a truck driver, for instance, and, and um, I'm, I'm sharing with you uh, Garmin. By the way, this is not a sponsored video. All right, I, I do tend to use Garmin devices, but I have also used TomTom Tom devices in the past, and there are a lot of features, one versus the other, that I like a lot. But if you are a commercial truck driver, for instance, you will want special dedicated truck navigation maps on there. And, you know, if you, if you ride a motorcycle, for instance, they have dedicated units specifically designed for motor, motorcyclists because it's going to make you a lot safer. You're not going to be, you, you know, I don't ride a motorcycle, but if you are riding a motorcycle, you're not going to be affording to be able to looking at tweets and notifications on your phone while you're riding. That is just dangerous, uh, m mostly for yourself, um, especially here in L.A. versus others. Okay. So it's going to make you a lot safer driver because this is a real dedicated device that was designed from the ground up and bottom if you buy the right one to keep you you concentrated basically on the road and navigating correctly 
okay it's got a typically they have offer a bigger screen right it's going to be brighter so you can see in the sunlight and uh, it, it's going to have traffic if you get that option okay so you can get live traffic on these I'll talk about my unit a little bit more later so you can get live traffic updates on here as long as you pair it with your smartphone or if you have one of those with a cell phone uh, data connection that's already built in it's going to have voice recognition stuff right both the, both the main TomTom -tom units I use and the Garmin units that I use has excellent voice navigation I never actually have to take my hands off the wheel to tell it to navigate somewhere and it actually works pretty well as long as you remember the commands and it's really not that hard okay I have yet to be able to successfully do that on my uh, Waze device all right there's also other social media components on here depending on how high end that you get um, this was the top of the line Garmin unit back in the day and it actually has built in webcam I, I mean not webcam sorry dash cam as well so I have both things going on for it and the dash cam also gives me notifications if I'm driving too close driving too far driving out of my lane etc and I can adjust those uh, as needed the interface is dead simple to use right versus a smartphone depending on how big of a screen you have and what what GPS that you use the buttons are going to be really small to press that's going to make it a lot more dangerous if you need to interact with your phone for any reason while you're driving this Man, I, I could practically be wearing gloves. And actually, there's only two buttons, two main buttons here. Where to, right? Uh, and, and view map. And then I got special little buttons on it. These are so easy to press. Even if I have big buttery fingers, I can easily press this. I can't do that on my iPhone 10. Okay, so again, safety, UI interface, right? Um, mine actually has a lot of apps. So I... I you know, it's got the built-in dash cam features. I got a gallery feature. Uh, I got Foursquare in here so I can get um, recommendations and notifications about what's around me. I can even check in on this device uh, if I wanted to. I get weather notifications on here. Um, a parking information, live parking update information for those that support it through the live service, which is free, by the way, um, at least through the uh, smartphone data link. Same thing applies on a TomTom. -tom. I'm just showing you this because this is this is my main daily driver. I can even get live video cameras of traffic elsewhere. Naturally, I'm not going to be use this, using this when I'm driving, but I can actually use it um, when I'm planning a trip and I want to take a look at live traffic uh, directly on here. I think this was a feature I might have had to pay separately for, but it's a one-time lifetime thing. I got that smartphone link. Uh, that connects it. It connects wirelessly to a backup camera that was sold se that is sold separately. I can use this as a Bluetooth speakerphone, right? I actually have a device that this will connect directly to that gives me engine diagnostic information and also the way I'm driving and give me tips on that. The voice command actually works very well for me. I can plan my trip separately. So if you're going on a long road trip, Right across country, across state, uh, across different areas you've never been to, the standalone GPS is still winning, all the way. Uh, I find it really frustrating to try to figure out how to do that on a lot of the free GPSs, even even the ones that even the ones that um, I've paid for. Uh, and it keeps a log of my trips or travel. So if I need to do an expense, whatever, I can plug this up via USB. Business expense for travel, I just download the logs so I know exactly where I've been to, and I can just figure that out. Um, the last spot in terms of where I parked, if, if for instance, I parked somewhere and I, I unhook the device and take it with me uh, just for theft reasons or whatever, or if I have a smaller unit, I, I typically don't with this. I just love in, uh, lock in the glove compartment, whatever. Um, it'll tell me where I parked. See, some of these features are actually coming to, uh, to some of the, the well, it goes both sides, right? Some of the features from Waze are Waze and, and Google Maps and Apple Maps, et cetera, and the live features and social features are coming back to uh, portable GPS units. And then some of the functionality of GPS units are going over to Waze and um, Garmin Maps. So one other area where these portable navigation devices, besides the navigation point, which is which is typically on point in many places, is that uh, not all places okay some of you guys live out in a boonies in the middle of nowhere uh with with just new developments or something you you'll you will know right away you try one of these devices you'll know how good the map coverage is okay and the navigation is but 
this will actually give me lane guidance, which is a lot better than what I've seen on Waze or Google Maps even. Uh, it'll it'll show you all the lanes. It'll even give you a visual representation of the exits pretty well. And that's often a hit or miss on Waze and Google Maps. I'm just comparing it with that. And then um, this will give you better updates, or at least TomTom Tom gives me better updates where I can customize how far ahead of the turn that I need to be notified. Google Maps and Waze, there's no adjustment setting for that. That's helpful, right? You, you can set up the customized notifications about how far ahead you need to be notified, okay? Um, you can be notified more or less. There's some configurations in that. I'm just speaking in general. Some of these, these settings are very specific uh, device specific and, and sometimes it's in the higher end unit sometimes it's only in older units um, I'm just pointing out some of these these things that you can you can do on here versus uh, what you can get on an app or a free app or paid app on the smartphone right so and then there's something called real directions which which I like on a Garmin and that is um, well, if you look at the higher end units, maybe uh, let's go ahead and take a look and see the um, the high high end units and give you some idea there. So, the uh, it uses landmarks to help you. Um, here we go. Friendly guidance from Garmin with real directions. So instead of saying turn left up ahead, turn left you know hundred feet or hundred meters, or st it, it'll tell you things like turn right at that McDonald's up ahead. All right. Or, or turn left when you reach the KFC, or turn right at the, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever land, major landmark that is that that's programmed in there. So this way, if you're looking far away, and maybe your eyes can't exactly see the signs, or the signs aren't really lit up or visible in San Diego, this was a big issue for many years. Was that a lot of the traffic signs weren't well lit, but they were landmarks. Right, the landmarks are businesses where they have signs that are on, and you know you can see it from far away because they have gigantic signs. Right, McDonald's, you can see it, see it like half a mile down the street, or more. Um, so you you can see, or you know, turn right after uh, Ralph's or Savon or Taco Bell, uh, right. So you don't get that with Waze or Google Maps unless they buy another company. So you got to remember Waze and, Waze and Google, uh, they are not in the business of giving you navigation. They're in the business of tracking you so that they can sell ads and crap to you. Okay, so you got to remember that well, first and foremost, that's what they do, right? So, so I've noticed some things on Waze lately uh, where, you know, they'll display ads. And I'm happy that, you know, they're doing that. I want to make sure that they continue to stay a viable, profitable business unit. Uh, in, in a sense, because there's nothing like they're out there in order to report things, situations, accidents right away. So these have live traffic updates. Uh, there's different levels that you can choose from on this Garmin. I'm able to choose from like several different service providers. One is the Garmin HD traffic, which updates like every minute or two minutes or something like that, something a lot quicker. There's the old FM one, which updates maybe every 10 minutes. I can choose between that depending on what I have connected here. There's also the live version, which you download a free app. Uh, I think it's Garmin Live or something where you connect it via Bluetooth. And with the data plan, it will give you uh, even more up-to-date uh, information directly from your data plan. Okay, here's a very obvious one. You don't need data with this. You don't need a data plan. So if you're in an area where you don't have reception whatsoever, this isn't going to keep you. I mean, you're not going to be stranded, right? Sure, things like this happen uh, less and less now that cell phone coverage has been has been spread out just about everywhere. But sometimes, you know, things go out. Um, you know, you you get a you get an outage somewhere, too much congestion, and then and then boom, your data plans no good, or if your cell phone malfunctions, right? This is doing tons of things all at once. My iPhone 10 has like tons of things going on in here all the freaking time. Um, there have been, have been times where the phone just completely just ups and reboots. And if you're driving, that's going to mess you up in an area that you don't know. It happens a lot less frequently on dedicated navigation devices. Okay, a couple of tips, a couple of other tips besides some of the features that I talked about here. You're going to want to get one that is um, 
it has lifetime map updates. It doesn't make sense for you to buy any one that does not have lifetime map updates because those updates happen uh, at least quarterly, sometimes a little bit more often. And you're going to want to take advantage of that and download the latest maps. And software fixes and bug fixes and all that stuff are free, but the map updates typically you got to pay for. So make sure you get one that offers lifetime map updates. Usually it doesn't cost you a lot more versus one that doesn't. I think most of them that are sold now have the lifetime map updates, but some of them don't. And you got to pay like 50, 50 bucks a year, 60 bucks a year. It, it's really annoying to say the least, which is really horrible for people who use the car navigation uh, maps GPS because you got to pay up the wazoo for those, right? Okay, so if you're not willing to pay up the wazoo for that, you'll want to get a dedicated unit. And I think these navigate a lot better than the ones that are built into most cars these days anyway. Okay, so you have that. The quality of the maps are definitely higher quality. Um, there's also 3D uh, map visualization, special landmark stuff that you can get on these fancier portable navigation devices that you don't get with a smartphone. Plus, um, these devices are... You know, a great one right now is like under $200. Um, and, and you get you get a good part of those features, right? The Garmin Drive Smart 61 LMTS Advanced Navigation Smart Features. Look at that. It even looks like a smartphone. You can see the UI navigation just looks a lot better and cleaner and, and just overall just, just more easier to use while you're driving if you do need to. Okay. And then, you know, this this has links to stuff. If you have a Garmin smartwatch, it can give you notices and stuff on your phone, a link to other things. Then it's got TripAdvisor. Mine doesn't have TripAdvisor as Foursquare, but some of these newer ones have TripAdvisor to give you actually useful information without requiring data. Okay. Again, so if you're on a limited data plan or something, unlimited versus unlimited, or you're traveling across country or in a different country that you're not aware of, um, again, these portable navigations are, are going to be a lot better for you. One really awesome thing I really liked about my old TomTom Tom device was that I can set up and download specific POIs, points of interest, um, that I can have it alert me for. So if, for instance, when I was on some road trips, a lot of times where I need, as a traveling consultant, a lot of times I needed uh, Wi-Fi on the go. And one of the, the key areas that had Wi-Fi all the time was Starbucks. So I would program it and download all the locations of Starbucks so that as I'm driving through somewhere, let's say on a freeway or road trip, it will let me know anytime that there is a Starbucks. Okay, it'll, it'll say, hey, there's a Starbucks coming up in such and such, and I, I can program how many, however many yards, however many miles, half a mile down the road. And it'll say a couple of things. It'll say, uh, it, it'll give a little alert, and I can have read out the alert, and it'll say, um, you know, Starbucks up ahead in a quarter mile, right? It'll show a little pop up, and if I if 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 I if I click it or tell it that I want to go to it, it'll then, you know, add it to my route so I can make sure I can get out or you know or a place where a rest stop, right? And then it'll say if I program it such, uh, next opportunity for the Starbucks along the route is in another 20 miles, you know, down the route. Well, basically along my route to make sure that wherever I'm going to for the Starbucks, it's not complete out of my way, you know, to get that Wi-Fi. This is back before hotspot days. Uh, be, before hotspot plans and stuff uh, was was somewhat affordable, so that was ex extremely useful. Um, other things I used that for was uh, you know there there's a stinky cow area where you know along the five freeway up and down. Those of you in California drive up and down L.A. and San Francisco know what I'm talking about, and I would have it alert so that I'd make sure I turn off the vent so that you know before I hit that area I have the vent off so that it's recirculating inside air versus pulling in all the cow plop. This is especially bad during the summer. Right. So there were there were some cool fringe benefits on on this on, on this type of stuff. Uh, as you can see with the newer ones, it's compatible with Siri and Google now. Uh, mine is not, but it's OK because I could just talk to my phone. I can just just say, you know, hey, Siri. Right. And I can ask you to do things. Or if you have an Android device, you can say, you know, you can say, OK, Google, you know, start listening. To mute the mic on Google Home, press the button on the back of the device. You'll know it's muted when you see four orange lights on the top. Again, if you have a problem with privacy, uh, this is this is particularly a, a great reason. So 
again, it's just effortless. You're just going to be a safer driver with it. You don't need a data plan. You don't have to worry about the privacy thing. The screen's going to be bigger typically than, than your typical smartphone that you'll want to carry around. It's going to be a lot cheaper than a fancy smartphone. You don't have to pay for a data plan. However, when you're buying one of these too, also note that a lot of these new ones feature the live traffic, but you got to pair it with your smartphone via Bluetooth so it sends over that data. So before they used to sell the ones where you get the HD traffic and now they sell that separately. So they're able to really uh, reduce the price of some of these GPS units. But then now if you want HD traffic, like in an area where you don't have data or if you don't want to use data from your smartphone or share that information to Garmin, Google or whatever is out there, you're going to have to buy that separately. And that's usually another 50, 60, 70, 80 dollars. OK, so so that's a tip. You definitely want to keep that in mind. So you might be looking at this and go, hey, is Garmin Drive Smart 61 LMT, which stands for Lifetime Maps and Traffic dash S. Um, I don't know what the S stands for. Maybe Smart Features. OK, so th th that's that's how you um, that's how you distinguish it. Just basically on, on the model name is that they don't give you that cigarette plug in receiver that has that subscription thing to get get the traffic information. All right. You actually have to use the app in order to get it. OK. Another also other thing is that you can customize your route a lot better on these portable navigation devices than you can on Waze. Yes, Waze has improved quite a bit. Google Maps has improved quite a bit. If you want to reroute somewhere, you know how to where you can you can actually just draw it on a map or move things around. And then um, when you click the route instructions, it'll actually give you three different routes on the portable navigation devices. You can you, there's a lot of times, not all of them. OK, again, this highly depends on a feature. So if there's a specific feature you want, those are things you're going to want to look search out specific models for. But on some of them, you can you can customize it so much better. You can you can choose whether or not you want carpool, whether or not you're you're going to do toll roads, whether or not you're going to go off road, whether you're not going to stay on road, whether or not um, you're you're going to take your normal route. Some of these actually remember so whether or not you're going to take the eco route, which is basically a route that um, that you minimizes the use of gas and minimizes the amount of greenhouse effect you have on the rest of society. Right. So if it gives you a, a eco route, it's going to figure out and, and I'm talking about advanced feature on, on, on my Garmin that with my OBD to plug uh, that plugs into the carport of my Subaru and this and using eco route, it will then calculate and identify the best route where I would save the most amount of gas and reduce my carbon emissions. OK, and usually when you look at the eco route versus the the uh, the fastest route, which is a lot of times what I take to when I'm going to meetings because I want to get there fast is y y you might just spend a couple of extra minutes or so taking the eco route versus um, the uh, the fastest route, right? And you can choose between the shortest route, etc. So there's a lot more customization customization options that are more easily available on this. Waze uh, and Google Maps are great for point to point, right? Um, another thing that I use a lot when I'm on road trips is when I have the general navigation up, and then I want to say, okay, well, I want to find something along, along the route or uh, near my destination or where I'm at right now. This will help me find it a lot better and I can do it completely hands free all via voice navigation because it'll tell you what prompts you can say. You don't have to memorize things. It's not like Alexa. I'm going to tell cancel. Where you have to know some of the commands. It actually shows you on a Garmin what you can say. So you know exactly what to choose from off the screen. And I never have to take my I never had to take my eyes far off from from uh, from where I'm driving, right? Because I have it right there on the windshield, and you know that that's actually a lot better uh, and safer. So again, safety, safety's a big reason why you want to consider one of these. Now, remember when I said at the very beginning that I I I just a lot of times if I had to choose one thing to use, it's going to be ways, right? I often have both of these things up because one, I have a dash cam on here, but this is also my backup. Sometimes the navigation on Waze and Garmin, uh, Waze and Google Maps and Apple Maps is just completely out of whack. Actually, you know what? There have been a lot of people that have died, literally died from following instructions 
on these navigation devices. Um, I, I'm talking about the free navigation like Google Maps and Waze, etc. Because you program it to do a certain way, okay? And it's not the popular way, but because it's doing its calculation, it doesn't know necessarily about the terrain. It doesn't necessarily know about the dangers that could be involved from the route it is telling you to take. I guess this was more so an issue um, before in the past uh, versus now, because I think they've gotten smarter. But it could take you off road some weird random way and you could get stuck somewhere and just would not make your way out. And then on top of that, you won't have cell reception and all to figure out your way out and then you can't call for help. Yeah, that, that is a, a pretty scary thing. Garmin and um, Tom Tom and these other guys aren't gonna do that. They're gonna recommend that you take some of the tried, trusted true thing, true routes more so than Waze will take you some sort of other scenic route, okay? So again, if you're, tra if you're traveling in a very unfamiliar area, out in the boonies, not a lot of data, etc., or if you live in such an area, portable navigation device is still gonna be it. Okay, so hopefully I brought up some, some pretty good examples about why you wanna use a dedicated GPS type of device now even with today's age where you have excellent navigation from Google Maps, Waze, Apple Maps. I don't know about Apple Maps, okay? Actually, you know, when that came out, throw out Apple Maps, I don't know. Sometimes I'm stuck with using it just because of the way Apple uh, integrates with that other um, software, but I, I honestly, in LA, Waze is it, uh, just in terms of the traffic because number one thing that's so frustrating is about the traffic and then yeah but this you know with the traffic it, it's it's been getting fairly up to date even without connecting with my phone it'll say it will tell me you know traffic's building up ahead it will recommend some routes it'll tell me how much time would save if i chose this route versus that route and whether or not i want to take it etc so it's it's got those cool features as well and i'm talking about specifically about um, my garmin also, the speaker quality on here is fantastic. Some of these models will actually help you play podcasts directly. You can upload, um, uh, you can download Audible on some of these units as well. So you can listen to your audio books all through here. Uh, some of them will connect via Bluetooth to your car so you can play through your car audio. But, you know, usually the speaker is decent enough, at least for voice and, and, and the way those things um uh, are, are connected sometimes you just want to use the speaker that's directly on a GPS and leave the car audio for some other things okay and then the mounting is usually better designed um, than 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 trying to mount your smartphone okay another one may another big major thing a lot of people don't consider is the wear and tear that you get from using the GPS on your phone if you have noticed that you keep your phone, let's, let's particularly in the summer or in, or in extreme temperature areas such as Las Vegas, you know, Death Valley, etc. You you put this up on the windshield area so that it's visually there, right? You stick this up there. The sun is just blazing down on it. On top of that, the GPS chip in here just heats up the phone. Heat is a major, major, major cause of a lot of the problems with these phones and the batteries. So if you want to extend the life of your phone, you want to keep it at extreme temperatures where it could overheat. And you know, I've had that happen before, right? Um, so so that, that's another reason why a portable navigation device will work better because they're better designed for these extreme temperatures because they're designed to be put right up there uh, along the windshield or on, on the dashboard, whereas cell phones were not. So one way to alleviate that of course, with the cell phone is right. You, you get a supercharger, basically, you know, one of the quick charge things, Thunderbolt, so that puts in enough power and juice in there. You can help it with it taking so much processing because, for whatever reason, GPS just drains the battery quite a bit. It just literally just drains it so fast, so much faster than than normal. I guess it's gotten a lot better in previous uh, in, in in recent years. But previously, that's the way it, it has been. And actually, my one amp charger in the car wirelessly can barely keep 
enough charge on here. So no matter what, using my Qi charger and my iPhone 10 for Waze navigation, for instance, still manages to drain the battery. It doesn't actually charge the battery. Okay. So the heat, right? You, you're getting additional wear and tear on here. Um, your battery life is going to more prematurely wear out. And I know this because I've had several other iPhones that because I use Waze a lot. Um, where the batteries has prematurely died uh, faster. And I attribute that to the heat and my use for navigation in the car on, on, you know, on the dashboard or on the windshield attached with the direct sun going down on it. Um, so, you know, if you value your smartphone and, and, and the longevity of it, uh, particularly if changing a battery is going to be really expensive for you or if you don't, you don't, you're more a frugal person. Um, the portable navigation device is definitely going to be your cheaper choice overall. Okay. All right. I think this has been, I, I mean, I, I spoke about this for 30 minutes. Actually, I can still go on. Um, but I, I, th I think you got the point, right? If, if, if you were still wondering why the hell people should get a uh, separate navigation, I think it covered many, many good points. And, and you know, the, the reasons why I actually still use both. The dash cam is, is, is a big reason. But it's still great to have a backup. And when I'm traveling and I don't want to touch my phone at all, you know, in some areas of the country, just touching your phone is enough for them to pull you over and give you a ticket. Voice navigation complete key it's accurate most of the time particularly if I, ha I if 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 I don't have a lot of traffic or road noise I don't have radio going I can pretty much get it to get me roughly around the area that I need to including speaking the addresses of places okay so um, I'm gonna have some links down below of well I'll link up my uh, Garmin GPS. I'll link up maybe my TomTom Tom GPS down there. And right now I see there's a deal, of course, on the Garmin Drive 61 LMTS. Seems like a good model. The one that I would probably recommend getting instead, though, is the one of the dash cam because it's so much more useful with the dash cam. And I will give some examples uh, on here if you... Yeah, I'll, I'll show some examples of the dash cam. Uh, it's useful for a variety of reasons. If you have if you have to deal with insurance claim or whatever, this is going to help you as well. And actually, some insurance some insurance companies will actually give you a discount for having a dash cam, uh, so that uh, you know keeping it running, so that in case of insurance or or any liability reasons, now you actually have footage. That's that's another reason why to consider one of these long ones. Now, if you haven't seen my videos about the Garmin Speak series or having uh, I, I, Alexa in the car, cancel. Sorry, I don't know that. You should check those out. I'm actually trying out the Anchor Rove Viva, which also has A in the car. Uh, so I'm going to have an update about that as well. And... Yeah, I, I have some useful tips in there. So anyways, please like this video. If you like it, if you don't like it, you can feel free to dislike it, of course. But please let me know why you didn't like it. I know this was long, but I think I covered just agnosium a lot of the good reasons why you want to have a portable navigation device completely separate from your phone and why it still makes sense today. Okay, please subscribe for more. If you have any questions, just go ahead and comment down below. And check out my uh, description sections. I'll probably answer some of these maybe more frequently asked questions if I get them. I also link down some of my favorite GPS devices, and I do try a lot of them. Although I haven't tried the latest Garmin devices, although I see there's just added a few features here and there, made a little bit slimmer, the bezel a little bit smaller, uh, etc. But mine is still a classic. Don't feel compelled to buy the absolute latest GPS device. Look at the features that are available on there. I guess you want to check out some of the reviews to see. You just basically want one fast, responsive, easy to use, has the features you want. Uh, lifetime traffic. Uh, lifetime traffic, you want the one that actually links with your smartphone too if you want that option. Definitely look out for the ones that have the, the uh, traffic option that is HD traffic. 
that comes from HD radio signals. Skip all the old ones that use FM radio for traffic, and I'm talking about a really, really old one. Buy one within the last five years uh, model. Anything older than that, I probably, I don't know, I look at it a little bit more carefully, but they're probably going to be dirt cheap anyway. Okay, I will catch you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, please share, like, and subscribe.